And uh, we're doing so much and speaking about so many different things and covering so many various aspects of all of the things that are going on. Um, two things. One of the things that bothered me last week and at the same time, um, it was funny at the time, but then it bothered me because it's part of my career. And that was last, like, last week when we were talking, started talking about um, UFOs and extraterrestrials and so forth, somebody got up and, and left and walked out. And you know, as I, th I thought to myself, in some instances, you know, no matter how mature we think we've gotten, there, we still are not capable of, of hearing something. You know, it, it, we're, we're frightened because of, and I, and it's not the person's fault. It's all of this horror that has come down from the systems and the religions who couldn't deal with this. It's, it's just a subject to talk about. You know, and, I, and I've told you, I, I, and I've said to you, I'll never talk about extraterrestrials or UFOs or any of that stuff unless it's in the Bible. I don't talk about anything unless it's in the Bible. It's just a subject. There was a, was some time ago I did a, a thing on um, homosexuals. Remember I did, we did two studies on homosexuals. I get calls. You're taking this in a new direction. You're trying to shove this down. I'm not supporting you anymore and all this kind of stuff. I only discussed homosexuals because it was in the Bible. But we were still part of camps and, and sometimes we just want, you know, why can't we talk about everything? Why do we have to exclude anything? And, uh, and so I, I, you know, I come upon this, it's very interesting, and it's, it's part, of, part of our culture, certainly UFOs, whatever, are part of our culture. Because people say they saw them. They accuse the government of hiding all this kind of stuff. I don't get involved in that. But they are in the Bible. And, and, and there's a reason. See, let me tell you why it's important. I come here on a Tuesday night. The most critically important thing is our meditation. There's nothing... There is nothing that, because, let, me, let me show you why it's so important. I mean, you, you talk about UFOs. UFOs don't come from outer space. They come from inner space. That's what you don't understand. They're not flying down from the planet Vulcan somewhere. If they were flying down from the planet Vulcan or wherever they come from, the radar screens would be blipping off the planet. They don't see them because they don't come that way. So how do they get here? Let me show you how they get there. So maybe you can put this together and you understand it. Because some, some, some people don't, don't pay any attention. They don't understand where I'm coming from. And a person, you know, and I, so a person to get, walk, to get up and walk out, it doesn't understand. Where do they come from? We, we talk about you. What did, what did the Bible say? When you make the tabernacle, you make the outer court, you make the inner holy place, and you make the curtain. As we know, that's arachnoid, the web, okay? What does it say about that inner court? And, 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 and then what did we find out? We found out that this is the human brain, and we found that out from Sted Stedman's medical dictionary, didn't we? Dura mater, pia mater, arachnoid. The outer court, the inner court, the curtain. So we know that. Now what does quote unquote God say in the Bible? It's very, very important that you include in the inner court. Cherubim, remember? You must have cherubim in that inner court. That means, that means that in your brain there is something that is defined as cherubim, some type of a receptor. Now, when Ezekiel seeing the UFO with, with the rocket thrust and shooting back and forth, and remember the guy gets out in the white suit, gets out of the UFO and goes under the wheels and the earth is scorched? What do you call him? Cherubim. What I'm telling you is these things that are seen are manifested out of consciousness. They're manifested out of meditation. They're a result of meditation. They don't come from another place. They come from within, out of consciousness. Oh, well, I don't understand. Certainly you don't understand how that works. But as we've talked about a hundred times, it, you know, a hundred years ago, nobody understood nuclear fission, nobody understood uh, uh, computers and televisions and all of this stuff that you take for granted. You don't understand this because you're 6,000 years behind this. The people that can do this are 6,000 years ahead of you. So a person here from another dimension who's lived in another civilization manifests these things out of consciousness. And they appear and they disappear. Just like that. And you can see them and they're gone. 
and they're part of your meditation. And I only say that because the Bible says that cherubim are in the brain. And the Bible also says that cherubim are UFOs. I mean, so why should I have that? And, and I'll tell you something. There is a point in your life where you have to say, we have found a key to changing what physically happens in the world that is so abusive. The violence against children, the violence against women, the violence against animals. I mean, it has to stop. And it can't stop unless something manifests that. Your meditation will manifest a physical reality that stops that stuff. Well, I come down here to meditate. I don't come in here to meditate for myself. I come in here to be part of your energy. And so that well, then my energy can flow to you and help you. I'll, and, and whatever I need, I'll get from you. So you're not here to meditate for yourself. And, and, and once you understand these various keys, then these things will manifest. And these quote-unquote people who are thousands of light years ahead of us in intelligence will, will manifest with the knowledge and the power to make these changes. And it's happening in the earth now. So don't be afraid of it. But the main thing is, never be afraid to listen to anything. You may disagree with it. It's okay. It's perfectly fine to disagree with anything. I don't want you to believe it. I told the people last night, please. So he says, uh, is there a Bill Donahue course or, or is there a, uh, well, I said, no, there is nothing. I don't want, uh, I don't, nothing. I don't have any. I don't, I don't want you to be, I don't want you to agree with me. All I'm trying to do is show you some stuff and say, hey, look. Then you take it to your private place and say, well, how am I going to work with this? But, you know, meditation, like on Tuesdays or Thursdays, you should show. And, and, and I found that Jesus knew what he was talking about. Where two or more are, there I am. And this is why this is... We want to develop these. But always remember this USFO and extraterrestrial stuff. Don't worry about it coming from another planet. It's not the way it comes. It manifests through the consciousness of some people who are here. There, when you learn how to use that right hemisphere of your brain, you will be able to manifest things. You'll be able to make things happen. Was it, you read about the stories of Jesus and all that kind of stuff? How did these things, how could this possibly happen? Well, he wasn't using 10%. He wasn't using 10%. And so this is the things that we have to start to understand. Now, for those of you who received the key, how many of you received the key? Just about almost everybody. Okay. For those of you who haven't received the key, um, if you're interested, I will, as I said, if it's just one person, I'll show up here one night. But it's, and it's not kept from anybody. It's just that it's done in a proper way so that the instruction goes with it so that you know. And the key is... It's a special key to open a special door. I mean, you ever go in a hotel and you want your key and they, and they give you a, a, a card of some kind and you go up to your room and you put it in and it opens your door. That's what this is. You don't need a key to meditate. You don't need a key to learn how to meditate. You don't need a key to learn how to do kundalini or any of that stuff. You can do it through all physical stuff. But you need a key to open this door. Okay. But I'll show you a few things. How many of you, well, I, I think most of you uh, recognize the symbol and recognize the, um, you know what I want to do too, when we show these things, do you think you could show them on the camera? Because what we usually do is we usually tell people this stuff and then they sit at home and they write me and say, how come I didn't say any of this stuff you're talking about? Why don't you ever show it? Some out of you. Uh, some kind of cult leader or something. Okay. Um, but I, I wanted, to, uh, first of all, I want to tell you that I am very grateful to the people here who have helped on this, on this project. Um, Joni Schultz and uh, Al, every, everybody that's helped. Uh, the other night, Debbie Sevilla came over. And I mean, I, I, it's different with women. Uh, I, I don't know, there, there's something about, there was really a difference. I know, with my wife, and, and I noticed it with, with Schultz and with Debbie and these people. They're like little child dogs that hang on to your car. They won't quit. They will never, they just hang on until, and they won't let go, you know. Don't stop. I said, you know, just stop. Let me, let me, let me catch my breath. And they go on. And, and, and Debbie, 
I said to Joan, she's just like you. She hangs on. She sat there, and she was determined to find out. That's, you know, what's, the, what's your number? 45, 55. Huh? She, she's going to find out. She, said, she calls me on the phone. You should be able to go on the internet and find this out. I said, look, I'm, I'm, I'm doing all this stuff. I don't know what the internet that. I said, what are you doing? Well, I don't know how to do that. Well, she said, I don't know how to get in the internet. So the next thing I know, she's talking to Joan, and Joan comes in the room, and she says, Debbie's on her way. I said, what do you mean Debbie's on her way? It's, it's 10 o'clock in the <laughs> She comes over, 10 o'clock in the Dave comes over. Dave, Dave is wise. He's got a lot of wisdom. He, fall, you know, he goes on the couch, hits the couch, turns the TV on, <laughs> gets on with the important stuff. She gets into the internet. And this is going on for... That woman sat at that internet until... It was after 1 o'clock, and it was about one, was what, quarter after 1 in the morning. And she's on the internet trying to find it. But you know what? Paid off. Not only what happened that night, but what happened the next day. So I'm gonna, I asked her to come up here because what I wanted to show you, I am not, I'm, I'm, I'm here to help you find the direction. But once you take an interest in this thing, um, so the, some of these things, I didn't find them, she did. So come up here. Started here as a Sunday school teacher, now she's an astrophysicist on the internet. <laughs> you didn't have to go to college. <laughs> no, you didn't have to go to college. But I, what I wanted to, to show you, remember when we, we turned on the, uh, she said, let's go to NASA, you know, we'll go to National Aeronautics and Space Agency and find out about this stuff. <laughs> so I said, so we went on. And you know, in the internet, when you have these modems that are slow, it can take hours. The thing goes, mm, mm, mm. loading, 373, 67,400 to go. Uh, boom, boom, boom. And it goes on and on and on. So we're trying to do this and we're changing it. But all of a sudden, we hit the one thing and we went to the NASA astrophysics department. Now, astrophysics is the universe, understanding the universe, the creation of planets and galaxies and things like that. And I need a couple of passer-outers. You want them? What we, now, if you haven't had the key, this isn't going to mean a whole lot to you. There's not enough for everybody here. But what I, we want to show you, and what Debbie really found, I mean, is the symbol for NASA's astrophysics department on exploring and planets and so forth. And, yeah, you can show them. And while you're passing that out, I don't know how many of you can see this. Does that look familiar? Can you see that? And there is the same symbol, minus the circles at the end, that Jesus gave thousands of years ago to the Coptics as a universal key. There's your, your X superimposed on the top of the cross, and that's the symbol, you know, that was part of the key that we gave you. Okay? I just found that to be absolutely startling that the most, you know, prestigious space agency in the world would use this symbol that we have connected to planets and so forth as the sign of their astrophysics department. So congratulations on that. All right, is that something? I mean, that is a, everywhere you turn, when you're on the right path and you're looking for, for those of you who, who are saying, what the heck is he talking about? Yes. Sarah just had something. Isn't that the same symbol that you see for the Star of Bethlehem? I think it is. I think it is. But, but the point, for those of you who are not, and I, if you want, please see Joan and we'll, we'll get together with you. Jesus provided a key to open the door in meditation that would take you above and beyond and into the heart of the universe. And one of the things was a symbol, the other was a word, and the other was a number. And uh, the symbol he gave was this, the only difference of his was little circles at the end of each of the lines, which um, you know, we feel at this point we're symbolizing the eight planets. And as you know so far this time, they've discovered four of them. The second thing that 
well, Joan found this one. And it's just, it, it, once again, it's an amazing thing. And do you remember the word azozio, okay? And do you remember the second part of the word is um, uh, part of the word zeolite, remember? Which azo is light and zeo, uh, zeolite, is a crystal filtering process. Well, we're in a chiesity or whatever this was. And Joan opens a page in this uh, health book that she had, opens it up, and we were shocked. You want to hand, hand these out, too? And if you, if you look, and just try to share as many as you can. If you can see this too, Deb. If you look, you'll see in the center of the column the crystals and the zeolite powder in the zeolite open mesh breather bags. And it says, natural zeolite powder is great for removing toxic outgassing from carpet. And then reusable zeolite bags, zeolite effectively removes air gases and odors and so forth and so on. And so it's a sieve filtering process. But it's, what I'm showing you, it is documentation. It's confirmation. And it's popping up all over the place. I never heard of this stuff before we heard of that word, and now here it is again. So basically, we remember now that that key, that word that is the key that Jesus gave us, is the zeo, which is the light, and uh, azo, which is the light, and the uh, zeolite, which is the light that's filtered by the crystal. So that's an interesting thing. And I thought that you'd find that to be a little more documentation and interesting. Okay? All right. Now, back to uh, Madame Sibilia, our uh, local cosmic researcher. What she found uh, makes the first two kind of, it dwarfs the first two because um, it's, it's just dynamically interesting. If you remember, um, the number that you were given through the Coptics by Jesus was number 45. 55. And we went through a lot of possibilities of, you know, what that could be, and a lot of thoughts of what that could be. But what became obvious to uh, Debbie as she was studying in her books and everything is that various galaxies had numbers that were symbol similar to this, all right? And the other night we were sitting here on Tuesday, I guess it was Tuesday night, wasn't it? Wednesday. Wednesday, okay, after we did this. And Debbie showed me this, and I uh, really, you talk about a spaceship and something strange. Now remember, the number that Jesus gave through the Coptics was 4555, all right? And she showed me this, and this is what really drove her to the point where she felt, she said, I just feel that this is what this is because of the similarity here. Um, could you two guys hand these out? Take a look at that. What you're about to see and what's about to be given to you is a spiral galaxy in the universe which bears the number 4565. So what we have is this symbol where we have tremendous evidence to assume not only now we see it supported by NASA, that it is an astrophysical symbol that was given by Jesus to the Coptics thousands of years ago. We have the word that we're beginning to understand as light filtered by crystal. And now take a look at that. Take a, you're talking about a spaceship. Take a look at that galaxy and take a look at the number 4565. All right? Okay? Now, let me have your attention. Let me have your attention. 4565 is not 4555. This is one I, I want. Everybody listen to me. Please listen to me. All right. <coughs> Debbie, uh, who I believe in, in, in God touches, when you're just, just willing to put a little effort into this and to seek like Jesus asked, Debbie wasn't content with this and she wasn't content with NASA. The next day, Debbie called the planetarium. And this is what I am ecstatic about. Debbie found 4555. Okay? And uh, I want you to uh, tell them about who you called and, and okay. how you found I called the planetarium at the Ocean County College, and um, a man there, what was his name, Joe? Michelle. 
Mr. Kinsella, who's really helpful. I asked him if he had a new general catalog, which I learned through um, reading um, books on astronomy and stuff. There's a catalog where all the stars and different various things in the universe are all numbered. Um, I think they're numbered maybe from one to over 5,000. So I knew that there probably was a 4555, five, five, <laughs> and I just didn't know what it was. So I asked him if he had the new general catalog, and he got back on the phone. He said, yes, I have it. So I asked him if I could buy it. And he said, no, it's a reference manual. You can't buy it. He said, maybe you can tell me what you're studying, and I'll, I'll help you out. So I told him that I was looking for 4555, five, five, and if there was anything that corresponded to it. And there was. And it ended up being an elliptical galaxy in the constellation Virgo. <laughs> yes, um, he did say that the galaxy is brighter towards the center, and it has really sharp features, distinct sharp features, and it's not named. It doesn't have a name. Name it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Stay here for a minute. Okay. Just, just think for a minute. And you know, I just got you know those little shivers. Just yeah. think for a minute. And here you're sitting here. You may know where God lives. You may have his address. <laughs> At least his telephone is <laughs> That's why if it's an unlisted number, you shouldn't share it with other people. Okay, now let's, let's get back to very, very serious again. This number, Debbie didn't make it up. I didn't make it up. We didn't find it in the New Age Journal. We didn't even find it in the Bible. This was given to Coptic Christians in Egypt. What makes this so significant? In Egypt? Who were the ones that were plotting the angles of the light out of the pyramids to Orion and Osiris and all of these in Egypt? And who were the ones that placed the pyramids as Orion's belt in Egypt? And it comes out of here. And this number, now, we find. You found that you have the symbol and NASA is using that symbol. And you found that it has the eight points on it, which are the, I believe, are the eight planets. And four of these planets have now been discovered that have never been seen before in the history of the world. And you found the word, and the one part of the word means light, and the second part of the word, which is zeo, which means a filtering process from crystal. And you have it now documented in that little ad. And then you had this number. And because this young lady opened herself through her meditation and her light, she was touched and driven and shown where, and she comes up with, no, we're not, I'm not telling you this is, I'm saying it's very interesting, isn't it? That 4555 is an unnamed elliptical. The word elliptical means egg-shaped. Egg-shaped. It's an unnamed elliptical galaxy with a bright center. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And from the egg comes the child. Yep. And this is in the place of the egg in Virgo. Wow. So you did a sensational job. And look what you all could do if you take this as seriously as she did. And uh, what is yet to come is just mind boggling. Debbie sat there the other night and she said to me, if we know this now, what are we going to know next year? <laughs> and, and do you know that you're now discovering where the help comes from to stop all of the violence, to stop all of the cancers, to stop all of the horror? And this strange voice thousands of years ago shared with these Egyptians, and Egyptian Coptics, you know what they said, the Coptics? They said, salvation doesn't come by faith. Salvation comes by knowledge. And your, and, your, and, you, and, and your meditation manifests into these wonders. So here you're sitting in this strange place, and this is the way it happens in all of the things of, 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 of spiritual. Here you're sitting in this strange room in a small group, and very well may have identified the location of the kingdom, of where all of the operations are carried out. Given! Why was the number given? Why was that number given to the Egyptians? Why was it given by Jesus? Why? What did it mean? And this galaxy, and a galaxy. Let me tell you something. When you talk about a galaxy, sometimes, you know, you, you um, 
we, okay, galaxies, normal galaxies, radio galaxies, quasars, which are believed to be extremely active nuclei. Normal galaxies have diameters ranging from 2,000 to nearly 800,000 light years, masses ranging from 1 million to 10 trillion solar masses, and luminosities lights ranging from 1 million to 100 billion suns. And she found this galaxy. So, I would say continue with your meditation continue seeking, continue working on this, and keep this, and I, I'm serious about it. Hold this to yourself as how wonderful this is. You don't want to go running around saying, well, hey, we know where God lives and all this kind of stuff. I'm serious. I'm very serious about it. But I think I honestly have a, thing, a strong feeling that because this came from Jesus and was part of the symbol and the name, that it very possibly may be the location of where this thing called God dwells. And you found the guy in the planetarium found it. No, he didn't find it. He had it in the book, and he still to this day doesn't know what he had. And that's the difference between you and the scientists. They find the things, but you know what the things are. Thanks a lot. That's, that's very exciting. One other thing that I wanted to share with you before we start. We start. We start. Well, I'll be fair. But one other thing I wanted to share with you that I found on the, um, as, as you know, to add to, I, I've given you the whole story of Jesus as the sun star, right? Born of a virgin in September, on the cross, December the 21st, three days and three nights in the tomb, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, the winter solstice, reborn December 25th. Uh, 30 years after his birth, he goes into John the Waterman. 30 days after, December 25th, the sun goes into Aquarius the Waterman. He selects his disciples from the fishermen. The sun enters Pisces the fish. He becomes the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. The sun enters Aries the Lamb and takes away the cold of the winter. He becomes the Lion of Judah. The sun enters Leo the Lion. It was another thing It's very interesting, and I found this in, in the encyclopedia too. Get this. Now, this where this, we pass over from winter to spring, when the sun moves to sit over here and summertime comes, is, you know, the sitting at the right hand of the Father and so forth and so on. And listen to this. The angle measured from the vernal equinox in the west to east direction, that's from left to right, which is opposite to the rotation of the celestial field, is the star's right ascension. In other words, there is an astronomical term that when the sun moves across the equator from south to north and then begins at the spring equinox we have now to move to the right so that summer can come, it is called celestial right ascension, ascending and sitting at the right hand. And it's the sun, and that's why. Jesus, who was born of a virgin, Virgo, who was crucified on the Southern Cross, who sits in the winter solstice, who was born on December 25th, who goes through Aquarius and Pisces, who consumes the lamb Aries, sits at the right hand of the Father because the Son is sitting in a celestial right ascension. Okay? And <laughs> when then you realize that as it is without, so it is within. As there are cherubims without, so there is cherubim within. As there is a celestial right ascension without, so there is a celestial right ascension within. So it's exciting, it's exciting stuff. And I can't tell you how thrilled I am for the support and for the work and for something like what she did. That, you know, it was a tremendous thing for me because when I sat with her, you should see both of us, it was about one o'clock in the morning, we're waiting for this thing and NASA to load and finally comes out, and they start loading and it comes out real slow and we just looked at each other, there it is, the sign, they're using it for astrophysics, the stars, the galaxies, the universe, there it is. And then the next day when she calls me up on the phone, you know, and, well, yeah, I found it, <laughs> I, I figured you would. That's great. So don't be afraid of these things. Understand the coded messages that are in the ancient documents from, from these things. And you can see the nuclear fissions in the Bible, the pineal glands in the Bible, the anatomy of the brains in the Bible, the speed of light is in the Bible, and yes, UFOs and ETs, it's all there, but it's all a wonderful part of the manifestation of consciousness. 
And be alert to things that happen. Remember what we showed, and I showed the people last night. Now you, you're, you're aware of the web. What's the difference between what well, Debbie was saying? Well, he found it. No, he didn't find it. He, look, people, people know of crop circles. We showed you a crop circle last week. And what was it? It was a web, a perfectly formed spider's web. And what have you learned is the most critical thing in the brain, the web that separates the outer from the inner. So be aware of these things. In Matthew 13, 35, Jesus says, I will open my mouth in parables. In other words, I will speak in symbols. And I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. But you, see, you have reached the point of evolving to where you begin to understand these things. And how can this be? What, is, what, are, we, what are we talking about? We're talking about things to make things right for children, to make things right for the animals, to make things right for the earth to change, to stop all of the madness and the violence and all this horror. See, go to page 788 for just a minute. And in the book of Matthew, take a look at what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 13. And another thing too, like, don't be afraid if I say something, and, you, and it, maybe it shakes you a little bit, and say, oh, you know, I don't know. Don't, don't get up and walk. Just listen. Because you're an adult person. You can handle anything. Don't be afraid to hear something. See, all that is is part of the old religious thing. Oh, don't listen to that. You know, when I was a little kid, we weren't allowed to go in churches other than our denomination because we were going to go to hell or something like that. I was, you know, I, I mean, I was living in hell. And, and, and you know, here's the <laughs> devil telling us you're going to go to hell. I'm in it. You don't know what I'm, you're talking about. So a guy last night's come up to me. He says, I, uh, I'm from a thing from uh, people with alcoholic parents. And he knew my story and all the violence. And, all. and he says, how did, you, how did you get away from that? I said, I ran away. I went to a religious school. And I ran like hell. I just, I left. The nuns and everybody was down. Where is he? Where did he go? So a guy said, where did you go? I said, I went, I went in the middle of the woods. And, you know, it's hard to find woods in Newark, but I found them. <laughs> I found them. I hung, I hung out in, 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 in the woods by myself because I couldn't deal with it. Because my father was a very violent person. And it was blood on the walls and banisters broken and knives flowing through the house and all this kind of stuff. And then when I get to church, I look on the wall. There's this guy hanging there with blood coming over him. I said, who did that? His father. <laughs> I said, this guy's worse than the guy I left home. <laughs> it's not the way it is, obviously, thank God. But look at, third, if, do you see this in Matthew chapter 13? For these people's heart is gross, their ears are dull of hearing, their eyes they've closed, lest any time they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, they should understand with their heart and be converted, and I'd heal them. If you only hope, if people will listen. Don't be afraid of these things. Don't, don't be scared to listen to things. You don't have to believe anything, but let it sit with you for a while. So begin to enter the world of what you've previously considered. You know, it's a, you know and, 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 and I want your meditation, I want your meditation to be such a power that you will eventually expect a manifestation. Something is going to manifest out of your consciousness. You're going to create out of your, that's what the whole Genesis is about. And there was dull and void and God hovered. And then he said, let there be light. In other words, this is an idea. Out of this idea, something happened. And I told you earlier, that's what these UFOs are for. And you have people who have lived here from another dimension, who are lived here, and they simply manifest these things out of consciousness. And I know it's hard for you to understand that, but you know, you, we're, you're, you're living in the realm of five senses. It's like, it's, I've said this many times, it's like getting your television and you only have 13 channels and you want to see Larry King. Well, he's on channel 53. Well, so as far as you're concerned, he doesn't exist because you only go up to 13. Well, it's not that he doesn't exist. You're not, you, you don't have the equipment. You, you're not, you don't have the tune. You've got to retune. You've got to put something on there so that you can reach a higher frequency. The most high God is simply the most high frequency. That's all. That's all it is. It's all electricity. What did we find out last week? What else has to be in the tabernacle besides the cherubim? The Ark of the Covenant. Well, you know you can't have an ARK in your head. That's silly. But what do you have in your head? You have an ARC, which is an arc, an arc, an electrical charge that goes from one spot to another. And it depends how you're going to think on the angle of that electrical arc. And so now you know what a, 
ark angel is. That's all it is. It's an angle of the arc. It's the angle of the electricity. It hits your brain. You think differently. That's where all this stuff is happening. You know, if you knew what you had, I can tell you something. I had people come to me last night in New York. Said, "Do you know that nobody, nobody in the world knows this stuff?" And you're sitting in, in Vito's basement. You got it all figured out. You know God's address in Vito's. Basement. There's God's not there. Oh, geez, they found out. Now they're going to be knocking on the door and be all over them. I'll never get rid of them. But if you don't understand what reality is, how can you be a part of the universe? How can we, how can we help these things? Have you, have you ever watched the TVs on this? The way animals are being brutalized and children are being brutalized and all this stuff? Well, that's not the way, th that's not the way things should be. But if you'll know the truth, you'll understand reality. Religion, and you know, religion that you've gone through all your life taught that, do you know that this is the truth? Religion, Christianity taught this truth. They taught that the world was flat, that the earth was the center of the universe. They taught that the sun and the stars and the planets revolve around the earth. That's what they taught. And anybody that dared say that, there's a little guy named Galileo, remember? I don't know his name was Vinny or what his name was, or Sal or whatever, Sal Galileo. And he comes in and he comes into the pastor and he says, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to say anything. All right. Yeah. He raises his hand like you do here. And Sal says, uh, this is wrong. <laughs> I, I, got a, I got a telescope. I fool with this stuff, you know, on weekends, you know. I don't know. This is all wrong. It, it's not the, 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 the earth goes around the sun, you know. The earth is just out there. Oh, okay. Good for you, Sal. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. That night, he gets a knock on his door. And the, and the priests are there. And Sal spends up in jail. He winds up in jail. See? Because the same people that told you that the earth was flat, and that the earth was the center of the universe, and that the sun and the stars and the planets revolved around the earth, told you that Jesus came and was killed by his father. And if you don't believe it, you're going to go to hell. The same people that told you the earth was flat told you that he came when his father killed him. Okay? And, he, and you know what? We all believed that they were right about the earth was flat for thousands of years. In fact, it was only a couple of months ago that the church apologized to Mrs. Galileo. <laughs> uh, sorry for the misunderstanding, Mrs. Uh, you know. But that's all. They didn't say we were full of baloney about this. We didn't know what we were talking about. We were a bunch of superstitious jerks. You can't, you, can't, you can't be sure of one thing and say, oh, okay, take that page out. <laughs> but then leave the rest of it in. Once you, once you make a statement like that, you go around, you're suspect. And boy, are they suspect. So when you open your mind to scientific truths, you learn they're 100% wrong. And now when you open your mind to spiritual truths, you learn about the makeup of the universe. And this is what's really exciting about the things that we've shown you here. The, the, the superstitious founders of, of what our religious heritage was had a lot of trouble with people that could think. You know who got in a lot of trouble? I can tell you people's names who got in a lot of trouble with religion, with Christianity. Christianity tried to kill them. There was a guy named Kepler. There was a guy named Galileo. There was another guy named Copernicus. Yes, Nicholas. anything to do with these guys? These were evil men. These were the devil's workers. You know. Why? Because they knew the truth. They knew science. They knew what God was doing. They didn't make stuff up. And what gives you the truth to overcome the lies and this ignorance that we've been raised with? It was in John 8, verse 31, Jesus says, if you continue in my word. In other words, if you understand this stuff. This is what, I, have not, I haven't come up here and told you all of this stuff. Every single thing that I've told you, every single thing. Can you think of one thing? Every single thing. I've given you a page from an astronomy book. I've given you something from the encyclopedia. Whatever it is, here today you got the symbol from NASA. Debbie worked. Debbie didn't go to some new age book to find this out. She went to the planetarium and got it from a scientist. You can call a guy up. We got his name. What's his name, Mr. Kinsella, call him up and say, is that, are you sure about that? He'll tell you. We haven't, I haven't stood up here and tell you religious stuff. I'm telling you the truth. You go home, there's a house there. There's a bed in your bedroom. There's a sink in your kitchen. There's a car in your drive. All this kind of stuff is real. And this is real too. The thing is, you accept the, the junk on the basis of the physical, your meditation will manifest the beautiful. 
Manifest the beautiful. Make it real. Just as real as your car. Just as real as your house. And then you'll manifest to the point where you'll see. You'll see these wonderful people who are trying, who are advancing. And you know what? You'll not only see them, you'll recognize them. And you're related to them. They're part of your family. People you've known. See? Now, I know it's hard to understand. But the fact that we have a hard time understanding it doesn't mean it's not true. And so what did Jesus say? What was, his, what was his direction for you? Understand something, that it's within you. Everything. When he says the kingdom, take that word kingdom out. That's too archaic. The universe is within you. The power is within you. The energy is within you. Nature is within you. The cosmos is within you. There are atoms and universes inside of your body. And when you learn how to touch and, and operate and turn these receptors on in your brain, then you contact, you communicate, and you start to work to change all of this stuff. There are people who are being oppressed, and you've got politicians in Washington, and the biggest thing that they're trying to do is how they can cut medical aid, how they can cut Medicare, how they can cut assistance to poor people, how they can do all of this against the oppressed people, people that, that can't rub two nickels together, and these guys are standing up and applauding. They never say anything to the companies. They never say anything to the corporations. How can can you lower your prices? Why are you charging so much for this? Why are you charging? Oh, that's off limits. They don't want to know that. Why do you have to charge so much for automobile insurance? Why do you have to charge so much for medical insurance? They don't ask them that. They ask little people who are making seven dollars an hour. Oh, we're going to cut you. Or some guy that snuck under a fence because he's trying to, you know, to get in to make a buck. What, what can we do to, 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 to get rid of these people? And they sit in their, in their black suits in Washington and get up and applaud because how many people have they hurt today? That's not right. And so he says it's within you. And what did he say is within you? Matthew 6, 22, he says the single eye is within you. The pineal gland of your brain. We've been through this a thousand times. And the pineal gland of, of the universe is Aries. And once the solar energy in your body rises and touches the pineal gland, it opens the right hemisphere of the brain. It's celestial right ascension. That's an astronomical fact. Because when the sun in the winter rises up and hit Aries, it sits over at the right side. And what happens? Look at the trees. Do you remember the tree in your yard that was just a stick, a gray stick? Look at it today. There's leaves on it. And look in your yard, there's flowers and all things are coming. Why? Because the sun has risen to Aries and sat at the right hand. And what will happen in your life? But it's not for you to take. It's for you to share. And it is to share with those oppressed people. And it is to share, to, to share with those kids and people who have been hurt by the systems. And it is to share with the animals and nature which is being tortured by the system. You wonder, you see these terrible things happen. And these tornadoes and these storms and everything. And yet these same people will, 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 will have these laboratories and they, they do these horrible things on animals. And they, they torture and all of these things go. And it's, they don't understand. Why is nature responding the way it is? Why is nature? Why is nature? I saw there's a program on a and &E, so Why is nature so cruel? Why? It's a joke. We can show you a picture of this the thing we got to the laboratory with cats, with the things they do are beyond belief. Rockefeller, Rockefeller University. Beyond belief, the torture they put on these animals. Federal. Federally funded. Yeah, they got plenty of money for that. You see? Well, why do we allow? And so then you say, well, you can't with these people. I can't stop them. And so then if I can, if I can through my med meditation, manifest anything, an object to hover over, and whatever has to happen, stop that violence. Stop the cruelty. Stop the oppression against poor people. Stop beating up on the underprivileged people. Stop taking advantage of, uh, of, of women. Stop exploiting nature. Stop torturing its animals. Then Jesus says it's within you. And he says, in, Matt, in John 21, 6, he says, cast your net to the right side. What's he talking about? What is he, the amazing Kreskin? What, what, cast your net to the right side, you catch a fish? He's saying, cast your energy to the right side, and you'll catch everything. Yes? Something just flashed back when I was a little boy. My cousin took me down his cellar and said, look into this telescope, and you'll see outer space. Yeah. So without questioning it, I looked into the telescope down in the cellar yeah. of the house, and I saw outer space. Yeah. It wasn't outside. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I got it. Okay. Very good. Very good. 
That's a hologram, too. We'll talk about that in a little while. You, what you see is not necessarily what somebody else can see, but it's there. Very good. And thank you for that time. Real quick, what else did Jesus say? Cast your net to right. He says, take no thought. Take no thought for your illness. Take no thought for your survival. Take no thought for your life. Take no thought to make the changes. He doesn't mean don't think about it. He doesn't mean don't worry about it. He says the way to make this manifest is take no thought. Separate from thought. Separate from your thought and allow cosmic thought. And he said, the way you do this, he says, you enter the closet and close the door. In other words, the closet is where you have all of your stuff. That's in here is where you have all of your stuff. You can't. And close the door means to separate yourself from the outside. And he says in Luke 22.10 that you do this when you see the man with the pitcher of water in the Aquarian age that we're in now. This is when this happens. And he said, you'll do that. And in Revelation 19.11 it says, And behold, heavens open, and I saw a white horse. And this is what this whole thing is about. This whole thing started because two astronomers in Switzerland looked up, and behold, the heavens parted, and they saw this comet, excuse me, they saw this star, and around it was a planet circling it. The first time it's ever been seen in the history of the world, and it was in the white horse Pegasus. 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 A whole new cosmology is born out of the evolution of the mind into the new. But do you, look, you're sitting here. You're, you're hearing stuff you couldn't even conceive. Could you conceive the stuff that you heard here, that, say a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, that you would have heard this stuff? What are you privy to understanding? But if you be like that young lady was and say, yes, I am going to run with this, I am going to work at this, I am going to look at this, and it will just blossom for you. You can't just let things. So now we know the earth is not the center of the system. The sun is the center. Now you have Hubble and you have all of these wonderful discoveries. But there are two major shifts that we will we'll talk about. We won't do it all today, and I know you're. But there are two major shifts quickly. One is called this, you might want to mark this down. One is called quantum physics. The other is called hologram. Classic physics was a truth we knew, but now there's a what called quantum physics. Why do they have to invent quantum physics? Because there wasn't answers for the things that were happening. Albert, like, what do you know? You know what Al Albert he was is a physicist. You know what Albert told me one of the things years ago. He told me two and two does not necessarily make four. If you take two parts of this and two parts of this, you make it 3.8. And he says that the physicists, when they found this out, had to develop a whole new table of mathematics. Because the one that we have doesn't work for that. If you add two and two, you get four. Albert would add two and two, and he get three points on it. So you have to understand a whole new thing. You have to understand a whole new way of, of life and of being in life. See? Classical physics says that the universe is objective and, and predictable. The universe is made up of particles of matter. In other words, there's a world out there. You're part of it. You're not the center of it. You're just one of the things. Do you know how many planets there are like the Earth? Billions of them. And you know what people are doing all over the place? Going to the movies, watching TV, riding cars, going to Great Adventure, going to Atlantic City, pulling. Do you know if there were people on other planets and Vulcan or whatever, and they're in places playing slot machines? <laughs> it's all the same. It's a wonderful, wonderful creation. And going from planet to planet are these UFOs or whatever, are people trying to say, how's things look? Have they made any progress? You wouldn't believe. You wouldn't believe what's down there. <laughs> oh, geez. What do we have to do? But you see, your planet has reached this Aquarian cusp. So now, what happens? You start to understand. Do you know a hundred years ago, you, people were lighting candles? Everything has happened in the last 75 years. Electricity, radio, telephone, medicine, x-rays, computers, everything. The whole other 20 million years is a blur. It all happened. Why? Because of Aquarius. And all the rest is like going to school. It's the evolution. Learning to live. You know, see, people had to learn to live as groups before they could learn to live as individuals. People had to learn symbols before they could learn reality. So it's all part of the Earth's evolution. And you grow and you grow until you finally begin to understand. And now you reach this point, you can understand it. If I tell you, I tell you God took a rib from Adam, you know what that is. 
You know God didn't take any rib out of a man. You know that that's what that's simply saying is that life comes from the splitting of the atom. You take an electron out of an atom, you multiply the energy. You take a rib out of atom, you multiply humanity. That's what it is. What's the big deal? What's the problem? Isn't it good to know? Is that a big deal? Is that hurting your faith? I can't have faith anymore. I can't have faith. Can you, you know, religious people are more comfortable with this guy sleeping and God comes down whatever he is and rips a rib out of him. And then he got this piece of rib with all this stuff hanging on it and he says, well, I'll make a lady out of this. <laughs> but you know what? For, th for thousands of years, we couldn't do anything with that. What could you do? Nobody knew. It was okay. How did we get created? He took a rib out of that poor devil, and that's it. And he made the lady out of spare ribs, and that's the end of that. <laughs> Nobody said anything. Nobody could think anything. That's okay with me. After we get done saying you're nothing but an old spare rib, we get up and sang Amazing Grace. Boy, that Grace is amazing because she's nothing but an old spare rib. Look what happened. But then we find out in 1996 about nuclear fission and we realize that what was being said to us is you remove an electron and you create the universe through nuclear fission. So we learn. Is that bad? Shouldn't that give you more faith? Shouldn't that give you more faith when you learn the reality and you document all of this stuff? Shouldn't that make you excited and say, hey, wait a minute, this book is filled with stuff. But you know what? I don't care about this. I don't want to read one thing in this book unless I can document it scientifically. And that's what I do. So, the extraterrestrial, whatever you want to call it, it's within you. The quantum physics is within you. So like religion, when you learn all of the facts and the formulas that govern matter or religion, reliable predictions or prophecies are possible. Let me do it real quick. I'm sorry I'm, I'm holding you, but I just, and I'll be out of here in a second. But let me just show you something real quick. Let's do science, religion, okay? And if we put on the left side of science, we have facts. And we put on the right side in religion, we have denominations or Bibles, okay? And then on the left side, we have formulas or mathematics in science. And in religion, we have doctrines, all right, rituals. And then on the left side, we have predictions. Science can predict. We have prophecies in the Bible, okay? And then on the left side, we have matter. We have the universe. On the right side, for we have God, we have heaven, and so forth and so on. So everything is known. You've known this way through science, known that way through religion. But there's a problem. On the religious side, remember, these people were wrong. These people were wrong about the things that they said. And there are scientists who were wrong too. But a scientist doesn't say, I'm wrong, but I'm sticking with it. A scientist says, wait a minute, i got to... I gotta redo this. I gotta look again. You're a scientist, you know that. I gotta find out. But a religionist doesn't say I'm wrong. It says, don't let them find out. We're wrong. <laughs> How do we deal with this, Father? Don't let them ask any questions. Get rid of them. Back in the Middle Ages, they really got rid of them. <laughs> okay. But this is how there's a big difference. But now, this new thing, and, uh, and we're going to wrap it up right here, Brian. There is a new religion, a new paradigm called quantum physics. What is it? Quantum physics is you. Quantum physics is what you're doing in here. The old physics, the old beliefs, the old questions. And here's the old belief, and here's the old physics, and here's the old question. Okay? Here we have this stuff, primordial stuff going through the universe. Okay, can you see this? It's very important to see the primordial stuff. And all of a sudden, bang! Now out of this bang and primordial stuff, somehow developed consciousness. So the question is from religion and the question is from physics, how did that consciousness develop out of that bang. Hmm. Quantum physics asks a different question. Quantum physics says, 
how did consciousness create the bang? It wasn't the bang that made consciousness. It was consciousness that made the bang. See? It didn't happen to you out of it uh, developed because of consciousness, something within you. See? So we say, how then does consciousness contact? How does consciousness manifest the change? You're, 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 you're on the doorstep of this, folks. You're on the doorstep of understanding these things. How does this work? And that's why I don't want any of you to be afraid and run away. It, it, it evolves out of consciousness. And, and, and quantum physics takes us to the Bible. I can't deal with it unless it's biblically accurate. I, I, I have to, everything I do comes through the Bible. I have to stay biblical. And why is that? Because this book is carried around by more people probably in this country than any other book. And I've got to be able to justify with them from this book. They won't tolerate listening to me if I use anything else but this book. So that's what I do. And it works. But here's the word. In the beginning was the word. Quantum. In the beginning was consciousness. And the consciousness was God. And the consciousness was with God. The consciousness was the supreme extraterrestrial. And the consciousness was this. And the consciousness was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. So the Bible and Planck agree quantum physics. Consciousness creates. And if consciousness is the point of creation and God, then the point of control and contact is consciousness. And consciousness evolves and blossoms out of meditation. And consciousness then creates that which you call the extraterrestrial, the UFO. Consciousness creates that which then brings the power to change you, to change the world, to take away the oppression, to take away the violence, to to stop the guns and the bombs and all of this stuff and to raise up those people who have been hurt and oppressed and to pe stand people on their feet and to make the planet Earth, the planet Heaven, through consciousness. And the consciousness is within you. That's why it's so important to me for the job that I have been given to try to encourage you. Your meditation. Develop your consciousness. Use your key. You're going into that palace which is God's and that key you have. People can open a lot of doors. Compassion, sympathy, understanding. My arm feels better. I think I saw something. But there's only one key that opens that one door where nobody else can go. And that key is the eight points as OCO 4555. And many of you have it. Thank you very much for sharing this time with us. And that's